Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation uh, with a follow-up video to the last one where we found an archived weather map which was for July 4th, 2001. And the question on the quiz was, what is the wind on that time and date at 30, 30 north, 130 west, which is that point right there? We noticed, uh, coincidentally, there were two ship reports. One was uh, 15, uh, 10 knots something like 10. It says 10 here, but that's really, remember, these are plus or minus 2.5, so that's 7.5 uh, to 12.5. And, and then this one right here, this ship report is uh, 20, 20 knots. And, uh, and the, the note at the end of the last video was that's probably, uh, looking at the spacing of these isobars, that's probably a little stronger than right, uh, the, or, or a little stronger than consistent with this spacing which means they may have had some convection or something uh, at the time they actually made that report. So the wind, so we want to read the wind at this point here, and the technique we'll use would be, uh, here we have a case where we know almost certainly the wind is somewhere out of the north here, and it's somewhere between probably, well, that's too big, but say 15 and 10, something here. We know that to start with. But the same technique would be used to find the wind here or here or here, here, someplace where it's not there. Uh, it's just a coincidence that's there. So the first thing, the wind, the wind speed on one of these maps depends on how far apart these isobars are. These isobars are four in the U.S. maps, four millibars apart. So that's 16 millibars. This must be 20. I don't see a label, but then this one's 24. So that's 16, 24. I mean, 16, 20, 24, 28. And so we want to know how far apart in, in the table that we've developed, we want to know how far apart are these isobars in degrees of latitude. Every degree is 60 nautical miles. So we want to know that distance. How far apart are they? This is stronger wind, and this is weaker wind, and so forth. And it also depends on the latitude. It also depends on the latitude. So step one is to, we have to have, the, there's no grid on this map, so step one is you do have to make a grid. And one, uh, one uh, sort of a luxury tool, there's, there's various ways, and we have videos that tell different ways to do it without one of these pair of dividers, uh, which are about $100. But these are certainly luxury. So you just uh, just go on here and uh, set the marks and then to, with a pencil make the marks. So do it once so you don't have to do it twice. Then you could just, after that's done, then you can just use, uh, you know, regular, regular divi uh, dividers. Now here's something though to note. There, here's the spacing. This is a Mercator projection. So this is 30 to 40. That's 600 miles. So is this 600 miles, but it's not the same. So you see that distance there is that, but over here, that's not quite right. So we're right at, uh, right at 30, so we'll just do a tick marks on both sides and then measure across here, which will be a little more accurate, something like that. So that's those tick marks. So now what we need to do is find out what is the spacing between these isobars at this point. And we could go, you know, something something like this is the distance, right, like that. And then take that over to our scale somewhere here in the middle. And we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 6... Uh, 360 miles, so it's 6 degrees, 6 degrees of latitude here. So then we go to our textbook, A Modern Marine Weather textbook, and it's in uh, section 2 called uh, uh, How to Figure Winds from Isobars. And then there's a formula. Somewhere in this book here, there is a formula right here. It depends on the sign of the latitude and so on. There's a formula. But we'll just go with the table. We're at 30 degrees north. Well, it doesn't matter north or south. 30 degrees, and then we come across here to 6. So that's 11, 11 knots. And so our estimate here would be that the wind speed is about 11 knots. Now, we're not going to believe that that's 11. I mean, that's going to be this whole, this whole science here. You know, if that's 10% accurate, that's going to be, re we're going to be happy about 10% accuracy on that. So it's like 11 uh, plus or minus 2 or so, 2.5. But we're going to have to also 
with the fact that it's 11, we're going to guess it's maybe a little bit more than 10. Sort of consistent with these guys. But then we have to figure the direction, and the direction is going to be across the isobars. We could draw in isobars if we like, like that. Maybe another one in here, like that. You know, see, that's whoop, actually maybe more like that. And so the wind is going to cross cross the isobars. It's going to go out of the high. See, that's the flow. That's the flow direction, like this. Across the isobars, maybe uh, 20, 30, uh, 10 to 10 to 20 or 30 degrees, depending on several factors discussed here in the book. But so this wind would be something like this. So we would say it's something like 350. I don't know. We're going to guess about it's about 350. So we're going to say 11, 11 at 350. That's the answer on the on the wind speed for that. Uh, that place. Now to get the uh, to get the pressure at that point, which I've muddied up quite a bit here. Okay, to get the pressure at this point, we want we know that these are four millibars apart. So we can just take these guys and say uh, let's see one, two, three, four, and just go across there. You know something like that's about four. So this is a 10, 16, 17, 18, oh, you know, depending on how you do this, about 18 and a half millibars. So we would say uh, 10, 18.5 millibars. So that would be the answer to the question, the pressure, the pressure in that. And that, those tables and the procedure are described in this textbook, which is uh, at our website and other places. And that's the end of uh, this uh, demo. Thank you.